a crossover edition with Locked On Bruins as Bruce Cassidy returns to Boston for the first time since he was fired last spring. Hi again, everyone. Tony Cardasco along with Chris Golick. We are here in Las Vegas, and today we are joined by Ian McLaren of Locked On Bruins. We'll have three parts to this drama today. In the first segment, we will talk about the Bruins, and uh, myself and Chris will ask Ian some questions about Boston and then he will uh, flip the script. He'll ask us in segment number two, and then we will have our predictions in the third round. Hi again, everyone, and we appreciate you all tuning in. Uh, Bruce Cassidy, big news today. It's a big day returning to Boston as the Golden Knights meet the Red Hot Bruins, who now have 20 wins on the season at TD Garden Arena tonight. Uh, Cassidy fired after going 245, 108, and 46, made it to the 2019 Cup Final, and Ian, first of all, welcome to the show. And Cassidy made the playoffs in each of his, what, eight seasons there in Boston. Has the team moved on from what uh, we saw and the firing and everything else and all that drama? Uh, what type of reception will we have tonight for Bruce Cassidy? And will there be a tribute video to welcome him <laughs> back to Boston? I mean, I, I would certainly hope so. First of all, nice to, to chat with you guys again. I think we talked uh, last when... Bruce Cassidy was fired and then quickly hired by Vegas within a week, I think it was. And, um, you know, I think it should be a pretty warm reception for Bruce Cassidy. Many fans were pretty uh, against the decision to fire him in the first place. And, of course, he was incredibly successful behind the bench, leading the team to the Stanley Cup final a few years ago. Uh, so I would – hope that there would be a tribute video and an opportunity for the fans to uh to give him the the welcome back that he deserves does Cassidy have the relationship with the players where before the game and after the game they're going to be stopping him in the back the back room and saying hello and exchanging pleasantries hey how have things gone good to see you or is it going to be kind of you know is it does he have that relationship still I think that's likely with um, some players, at least. I think you know, with your DeBrusque. your, <laughs> yeah, maybe not, uh, maybe not Jake DeBrusque, uh, maybe not a guy like uh, Trent Frederick, perhaps some of the younger guys. But I would expect, you know, Patrice Bergeron. Regardless, there's no uh, reason to believe that there was any frostiness in that relationship. But he, of course, would be all class, regardless. Uh, so I'm sure he'll take some time to to chat with Bruce, uh, Brad Marchand, likely some of those veteran guys, uh, maybe, maybe not with David Krejci, who, who of course left last season and went home to play over in Europe. Uh, but the guys who have been there the longest, uh, I'm sure there'll be, um, some pleasantries exchanged, uh, before, or after the game, maybe Zdeno Chara will be in the building. He played an alumni game with the Bruins over the weekend. Uh, so I'm sure he might, pop by it and say hello as well. Ian McLaren is with us. Tony Cardasco, Chris Golick here, Locked On Golden Knights and Locked On Bruins. And I wanted to ask you about the treatment of veterans while he was there, because mm -hmm. we've already seen where Bruce Cassidy makes a statement here in Las Vegas. And uh, he sat down, Jonathan Marshall, so for a few shifts, wasn't happy, wasn't pleased with his efforts in a game. And then uh, by the same token, he also sat down Chandler Stevenson. So I wanted mm -hmm. to ask you about how he treated the veterans and how many times did you see him make a statement there while he was the head coach in Boston? I mean, yeah, he's certainly no uh, stranger to sending some messages to uh, to his players if, if they're not performing up to his standards. Uh, I can't say we saw it as much with established veteran players in Boston. Of course, you already mentioned Jake DeBrusque. We saw that fairly frequently with him uh, taking a seat, spending a game or two or three in the press box. Some of the younger guys, those messages would be sent to. Um, not as much with, you know, obviously you're not going to scratch a, a Bergeron or a Marchand, but um, he always kind of toes that line between being uh, 
player friendly guy relating to the players, but also sending that message. If guys weren't playing that 200 foot game that, that he wants to see out of them. So yeah, it's uh, when you play that, uh, that game as a coach, you're always risking alienating players. It reportedly happened to some of the younger guys in Boston, but not as much with uh, some established veterans. Uh, We didn't really see that as much. I don't think what's what's different this year i mean obviously a new coach we can start there but the bruins are having a fantastic year and the same just like in vegas i mean there's always good expectations you want your team to do well you think your team is going to do well boston respectfully top of the league vegas not far behind right now two starts that no one probably pinged you know in the entire national hockey league so mm-hmm. i guess my first question and a follow up uh, would the team have been this successful if cassidy was still a coach and what is different? Is there a new system in Boston? Is it a relationship with the players? Why are they doing so well right now? I think it's, it's kind of a yes and no answer to that. I think the Bruins on paper to begin this season are better than they were last season. You had, like I mentioned, David Krejci, he's back this season, having him as your second line center over Charlie Coyle to begin last season and Eric Howla to finish the season. That's that's an immediate upgrade there. Uh, you have Pavel Zaka coming in. He's helped stabilize things and has really fit in well with uh, Krejci and David Pasternak. Pasternak got off to a slow start last season after undergoing some uh, you know personal uh, tragedy with uh, the loss of his infant son before last season. He's a much different player to begin this season. But at the same time, Jim Montgomery's system has infused a a real kind of offensive flair that they lacked under Bruce Cassidy. Uh, Most notably, the defensemen much more active in the offense. And uh, you've seen that aggressiveness pay off with uh, Hampus Lindholm getting off to an amazing start without Charlie McAvoy in the lineup. Now that McAvoy's back, you know, he's establishing himself again as a a top five defenseman in the NHL with some more offensive spark. So I think the Bruins would have gotten off to a good start. Even if Bruce Cassidy was still around Uh, the play of Linus Allmark has been unreal as well. And he's much more comfortable in Boston now than he was to begin last season as, as a new face. Uh, But there are some small differences to the system that Jim Montgomery has, uh, incorporated that have helped the Bruins certainly offensively and especially uh, five on five. Boston is uh, very strong at home, strong overall, but 14 and O at home currently mm-hmm. this season. And I wanted to talk about special teams because I feel that this will be an important factor in tonight's game. Um, and Boston currently second on the power play. They're ranked third on the PK and it, looking at some numbers, I watched uh, most of the game against the Avalanche on Saturday, Mm -hmm. David Pasternak has 16 power play points so far. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. He's been, uh, he's been off to a pretty special start to begin this season. You know, he's without a contract beyond the season. So his value is just going up, but he uh, yeah, his power play prowess is kind of reminiscent uh, of Alexander Ovechkin. You put him in that left dot, feed him a one-timer and he's more likely to put it uh, past you than not. And just the top power play unit that they're able to deploy is pretty, is pretty crazy with, you know, McAvoy, Bergeron, Marchand, Pasternak and David Krejci. That's a, you know, as good of a unit as you'll see around the NHL. Uh, Their power play uh, has been great. The penalty kill has been great. It kind of dipped a bit. With the absence of Derek Forbort, he was out for a while with a broken finger, but he's back in the lineup. Avalanche the other night didn't score a power play goal. I know they're missing some key players, but uh, still with Forbort back in the lineup, their their penalty kill is uh, arguably, yeah, tops in the league as well. It was before he went out uh, to injury anyways. The the VGK power play, I think, is still in the bottom third of the league right now, Tony, and I wonder if... uh we have 16 power play points collective as a unit right now, but oh, wow. that's another uh, question for another time. Um, so from one of our viewers, uh, Shally, John Shally, very good supporter of our show. 
the question is, what is Coach Cassidy like when things aren't going right for an extended period of time? And Tony, I'll reference, uh, you love to bring up how long uh, Cassidy went without there being a power play goal uh, in a stretch last season. That number was? Yeah. What was that number, Tony? You always, you love to put that in there. How many games, <laughs> opportunities, whatever it was. But point being, remember, come on, man. It was a big yeah, number. It was in the 30s. It, oh, no, Tony, it was, it was in the 30s, yeah. yeah. So point being is how does. It was, it was massive. The point being is how does Cassidy handle the highs and lows, particularly the lows? Do you see him getting edgy in his press conferences? Do you see him get a little fiery behind the bench? We notice here in Vegas, he, he goes right to the water bottle when he's not happy. We catch that way <laughs> yeah. in the back of a 217 or when I'm up in the press box. He When things aren't going well, he just gets the water and just starts going. So tell us mm-hmm. about the anger of Cassidy, if you will. Yeah, I, I never saw him get like super emotional, like, you know, throwing things or waving sticks or whatever, but waving sticks. Uh, oh God. It, it kind of goes <laughs> back to, to what we were talking about earlier. He he'll take it out in terms of holding his players accountable. And if they're not uh, performing up to his standards, then, you know, they'll get the odd scratch. They'll get perhaps a, uh, not a direct calling out in the media, but he'll, you know, say things that make it pretty obvious who he's talking to, who's not. Performing, we know all about that. <laughs> um, and send that message directly and indirectly to, to the guys who are, who are not performing. So um, he, he has very high standards for his players. And, and if they're not meeting them, then uh, then they'll certainly know about it. And, and the fans will certainly know about it as well. Coming up next, uh, Ian will flip the script, and Ian will be asking myself and Chris Golick again uh, some questions about VGK. Again, this is a crossover edition with Lockdown Bruins, Tony Cardasco, Chris Golick, and Ian Cameron McLaren. Hey, uh, our next partner has a product that we literally use, all three of us, each and every day. It's called Athletic Greens, and I like it personally because I don't have time to have a complete meal in the morning We're in Las Vegas, and we're always on the run. I've had it now for several months, and I do look forward to having it each and every day. It doesn't taste like that chalky kind of uh, super healthy uh, drink. It's very good, and it's got a mild sort of tropical taste, if you will. Uh, So what is this stuff? With one delicious scoop of Athletic Greens, you are absorbing 75 high-quality vitamins, minerals, whole food source superfoods, probiotics, and adaptogens that will help you start the day. I personally like to consume it each and every day. It also helps me to sleep very well. And what is the importance of a multivitamin? Tons of people take some kind of multivitamin. It's important to choose one with high quality ingredients that your body will actually absorb. AG1 is a small micro habit with a lot of big benefits. And it's one thing that you could do each and every day. It costs less than $3 a day. You are investing in your health and much, much more. And uh, in 2020, for instance, AG donated. They like to take care of uh, the No Kid Hungry uh, organization here in the U.S. And in 2020, they donated over 1.2 million meals to kids. Uh, To make it easy, Athletic Greens is going to give you a free one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. All you have to do is visit athleticgreens.com slash NHL network again athleticgreens.com slash NHL network and take ownership over your health and pick up the ultimate daily nutritional insurance welcome back to lockdown golden knights tony cardasco chris gallick here in las vegas joined today on this special edition by ian cameron mclaren of lockdown bruins we are at lockdown vgk of course, myself at Tony Dasco and Chris is at TD Chris G. Make sure that you subscribe to Locked On Golden Knights. Of course, that is our YouTube channel. Tell us about where they could find you, Ian. Yeah, they can uh, find me on Twitter, Instagram at Locked NHL Bruins and uh, search up Locked On Bruins on your favorite podcast app on YouTube. And uh, I am at Ian C. McLaren on uh, Twitter as well. How'd you get that okay. beanie? Oh, I need one of those beanies. It looks I've wonderful. got one. Yeah. They gave me one. One <laughs> year guy. anniversary. Is that the, your one year anniversary present? Uh, I think it I was. I want the watch in, in I feel like, like it was year two. three. What? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe I, I got, got the jelly of the last month. winter. I got Fire the jelly away. of the month club. 
<laughs> oh, very nice. Fire uh, I guess away, I'll Ian. start with uh, Bruce Cassidy, obviously, coming back to Boston the first time uh, since being fired, hired by Vegas. What, uh, what kind of impact has he had on the organization so far? Have you seen differences in uh, how things are handled on the ice, off the ice? Uh, and yeah, just your first impressions of, of Bruce Cassidy as head coach through the first uh, 20 something games here. I'll go quick and then I'll toss it to Chris, but it's an age of accountability. When mm. the VGK got rid of Max Pacioretty, he talked about a lack of accountability here in Las Vegas. And that to me is the number one difference with this organiza- organization, I said, organization uh, this year. Chris. <laughs> I was at a food truck on Saturday morning and it said, it said it takes a while for the food to get cooked. Trust the process. It said, I swear to God, I said, trust the process on it. But um, anyway, sorry, Ian, we're already going off the rails of segment two. We have a guest on the show. Um, so to answer, to parlay a little bit, Vegas term to parlay on what Tony's saying, uh, accountability and clarity. Uh, I really feel like we as fans, as media, have a better perspective on what the team is like uh, behind closed doors what's happening as far as discussions goes, accountability is such a big, big thing here. Um, mm-hmm. Cassidy, what I've noticed, uh, this is my first year covering the team on, you know, media credentials to a degree. So I get to you know interact and stuff with coach and everything. I didn't get to do this with the, the previous staff, but everyone I talk to says how different it is with Cassidy. He actually gives you stuff to talk about. He's just seems very human in the sense that he will go in great depth when he answers your questions um, in the post game scrums and things like that. He doesn't like, he'll give you a 90 second answer while basically staring directly at you and work in the room like that. And yeah. that certainly just shows you his interactions with the players and how he handles his, you know, personal relationships and such. And it's been a breath of fresh air. Pete DeBoer gave us none of that as fans or media. It was always, you know, kind of a happy go lucky. Everything is, is, is good, but you really never got a pulse on things. Right. Now, um, as a Bruins fan, there was always the, uh, I guess, kind of dream impossible goal of seeing Bruce Cassidy coach Jack Eichel, but in black and gold. Now, obviously that's a reality. <laughs> For uh, for you guys in Vegas, very nice, very um, nice. Seems as though he's a bit banged up. A bit of a game time decision for tonight. Uh, if you could uh, speak to that, his status, but also uh, in his first full season with uh, Vegas, how has Jack Eichel established himself as a as a, a leader, top scorer for uh, for Vegas? I think uh, it all started over the summer when. He, uh, Coach Cassidy and Jack Eichel met in Cape Cod and Mm -hmm. had a discussion. And you could tell from the get-go that Cassidy wanted to set a new standard for Eichel. He knows that he's got that talent. He's trying to draw as much as he possibly can out of him. Mm -hmm. Uh, The one thing that we've noticed, and Cassidy also had mentioned, right, Chris, about the way that Eichel has more or less improved defensively and getting out of the zone defensively and starting the rush, and he has 29 points uh, total in 26 games. He's phenomenal. He's the leader of this team. Uh, I think he's. we're seeing a different level currently of Jack Eichel. Now he did skate off the ice. Um, it was a non-contact injury. He's got a leg injury of some sort. Um, and after he left the ice in the game against Detroit the other night, he never returned. They're saying that he's day-to-day. We're finding out one thing about Jack Eichel. He is a gutsy competitor I mean a lot of people might have thought he was soft or something else and a distraction in the locker room and all of that I'm telling you he's been nothing but a hero for this team and a leader I I really do believe he's he's one of the leaders and he played last year I went to the Florida game and he broke his hand his wrist uh, came back and and played again does not miss any time so I think whatever it's going to take he'll probably try He's going to make an effort to be on the yeah. ice in the game tonight, no matter what that injury is. And then uh, we also saw he got hit by a puck um, on a slap shot. So now he's got that full uh, face guard on. It's like a bubble mask or whatever. And so he just he doesn't care. Like he'll he'll come back. He'll rally. He'll play hard. Um, I still say by far, by far, he's the best player on the ice at any given time for the VGK. Chris. 
I think it was just a thumb, Tony, before someone else grills you right now. But either way, <laughs> definitely, uh, he is a warrior. It was warrior. a thumb. Okay, man. It was a thumb. It was a thumb. It was a thumb. <laughs> Wrist, hand, thumb. Yeah, it's all, it's all, it's all, it was it's all connected. It's all connected. Lower body, lower body, or it'd be upper <laughs> body, hands up or hands down. But either way, um, yes, Jack Eichel is That's a warrior, right. and Eichel is going to do whatever he can to get out there for tonight's game. Yeah, I and I, I think an extra spin here, the team rallied around Jack Eichel so much when they were in Buffalo and obviously he had the hat trick and that was just a phenomenal game to watch. Right. And I really think the same emotional connection will be there tonight for the team wanting to get this win for Cassidy. You have the best home team and the best, I believe the best road team BGK, I think is a, what 11 and two on the road or something like that. Wow. Now, Tony, mm -hmm. we're in that same ballpark right now. It's his wrist hand, 11, two, 11, three, 10, whatever it is. It's all the same, <laughs> but point being is, you know, things are going extremely well for this team. Jack Eichel is a huge part of that. He's greater than a point per game pace. Uh, people thought I was nuts when I when I handicapped him at 90.5 points over under. And I think uh, he's going to flirt with 100 this injury mm -hmm. pending right now, of course. So, you know, dude's a warrior. We are extremely fortunate to have him. And like Tony mentioned, he's getting PK one time right now. He's out there oh, on wow. the kill. Something you didn't see a lot of in his time with Buffalo. And um, Cassidy... One of the, I think Eichel was the first call out in the media when Cassidy was hired, if I'm not mistaken. I say call out, just excited to get with him and challenge him and, you know, to elude Tony's meeting and things like that. So, right, right. It's all good for Eichel. Hopefully, uh, hopefully he's out there tonight. Yeah. Yeah. It would be a much more entertaining game for sure if he's out there. Uh, one of the questions coming into the season for Vegas was, of course, the, the goaltending situation uh, with Robin Leonard going out for the season. One of Bruce Cassidy's, strengths in Boston was getting the most out of his goaltenders, knowing how to read when to give a guy a start and when to sit him. Uh, you know, Logan Thompson right now, arguably in the Calder Trophy conversation, if not a front runner, uh, Maddie Beniers pending in, in Seattle. Uh, what's Cassidy's impact been on uh, the goaltending situation and uh, is his kind of ask uh, for a 200 foot game helping settle Logan Thompson as well, helping him with his game? Well, uh, Cass I'm going go first, Tony. I'm going first. <laughs> Cassidy, Cassidy has the perfect system worked out for the goaltenders. You ready? Aiden Hill starts on Saturdays, Logan Thompson starts the rest. <laughs> <laughs> that's that that's been there the that, that's kind of been how it's been i think for close to the last month or so now oh, wow. and and now all jokes aside um both the goaltenders have had a bit of a rough go over about the last uh 30 days or so now um the team is just right around 500 plus or minus after that nine game winning mm -hmm. streak a lot of games three and four goals plus um a couple better games recently at the Monday game against Pittsburgh, a lot of goals given up, but also LT uh, Logan Thompson that is established his season high or maybe even career high in saves Aiden Hill, a very nice start Saturday in Detroit. So hopefully things are getting better there. And yes, um, Cassidy certainly is getting the most out of the goaltending. Me and Tony talked about this so, so much in the off season. We liked the top nine forwards. Now the top 12 to a degree line three is shaky, but um, there's a line three. What exactly line? right exactly and and ian i, I want i want to get your perspective on on your line three in a little bit maybe we'll get back to that later but um sure. point being is we get cassidy yeah, he's gotten the most out of the goalies a very unknown situation coming into the season now has been one of our biggest strengths not named jack eichel or alex petrangelo right. so logan thompson and you also have to mention about him trolling you over the summer and mm -hmm. you thought he was going to be traded in the offseason come on chris and yeah, uh, 17 games started, uh, 12 and five, and his uh, goals against is 2.54. And, you know, Aiden Hill. So these two were supposed to be supposed to be a battle between these two mm -hmm. on who was going to start to be the goaltender number one in the offseason. And by leaps and bounds, it's Logan Thompson. And I always ask uh, Chris this question, Chris, like, do you think that these two goalies combined, are they going to win you Stanley Cup? And the answer is, is no. I think they need an experienced goaltender. I'm going to die on the cross saying that each and every day. Mm -hmm. Hey, Bruce, well, I had a good game uh, Friday for Henderson. <laughs> there you go. Um, uh, Ian, really line. fast. I, I, yeah, let yeah. me toss one back to you right now. Mm -hmm. Third line. What's yep. Cassidy's experience with the third line managing it? Was that ever an issue in Boston? Because it's, it's an issue here right now. I mean, it was an issue. It was mostly a 
roster composition issue. The Bruins were always pretty top heavy. Secondary scoring was always a challenge for this team under Bruce Cassidy, especially, uh, yeah, five on five. Um, I mean, right now the Bruins have the luxury of having, having a guy like Taylor Hall playing on the third line. That's amazing. Uh, he's, he's playing the, with Charlie left Coyle. Winger, left winger on the third line. And exactly, look at the talent, yeah. how deep they are in this team. Like when the yeah. Blackhawks had Marion Hossa on the third line. Come on. <laughs> yeah. Incredible. <laughs> so that's, uh, I mean, that's certainly to uh, Jim Montgomery's uh, benefit that he's got that possibility at the moment. Uh, yeah, it was always a bit of a mixing and matching. The Bruins were always trying to incorporate some younger guys onto the third line. Uh, that was one of the reasons he was let go was kind of that uh, lost messaging with young guys. Um, so yeah, that, I guess if that's a, a continued challenge now finding it is very easy to slot in your best players in your top six, finding that bottom six magic is where games championships are won or lost. And uh, it's, always seems to be as much of a, a GM problem as it is a, a coaching problem. Cassidy said when he was fired, you can only cook with uh, what is put in your shopping cart. And uh, that was the, that was the main issue uh, in Boston for sure. And I could see where Bruce Cassidy, I know that when they fired him, they said they needed a new voice. I could tell that he could wear on players. If you have yeah. to go through that each and every day, Ian, when we return, uh, we were going to talk about our predictions for tonight's mm -hmm. game. Stay with us, everyone. Tony Cardasco, Chris Golick in Las Vegas, and Ian Cameron McLaren from Locked On Bruins. Back with more after this on Locked On Golden Knights. BetOnline.net is your number one source for sports betting information for stats, news, and analysis. Get the latest odds and trends for every professional and amateur league that's out there. From football to basketball to soccer to NHL to esports, they have it all at betonline.net. And if you love sports podcasts, you could definitely find those on Bet Online as well. We're always the fastest and easiest way to get your betting fix. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn much more. Bet Online, where the game starts. Welcome back to our crossover edition. Tony Cardasco, Chris Golick in Las Vegas. And Ian Cameron McLaren joining us from Locked on Bruins. And uh, gents, it's time to get to our predictions for tonight's game. And I'm just going to say the second period will be the difference. I was watching again that game against the Avalanche, and that's where Boston took control of the game. Shots on goal was 15 to 4, and VGK is now a minus 5 in the second period. They just cannot get things straight. They finally won a second period in Detroit on Saturday. But I'm thinking that this could definitely be trouble for the VGK. My prediction on the game will be 5-3 Bruins. Go ahead, Ian. Go ahead. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna. I'm obviously going to err on the side of picking the Bruins. They've been uh, unbelievable at chalk home. Chalk eater. Chalk eater. <laughs> that chalk. I think that uh, they certain players for sure are going to be extra motivated to uh to beat bruce cassidy we we could see a little behind the scenes uh money on the board here on both sides i would imagine but um just the way the bruins have been playing at home i'm expecting linus allmark to get the start he's just been unbelievable so far uh the penalty uh kill power play i think special teams will be the difference if the bruins can get some early penalties uh, called for uh, Vegas and capitalize on those. Uh, five three seems uh, seems reasonable. I'm going to go uh, four one in this one. So what we know, well, first of all, Boston is a minus one eighty eight tonight. Uh, Vegas plus one fifty five. That's got to be the biggest underdog we have been all season to date. Uh, that that that's important first and foremost. Although the public absolutely loves the Bruins tonight, so you know how I feel about that, friends. VGK is giving up four goals tonight. No Petrangelo. I think Boston is going to score mm, yeah. tonight. I think if we have Jack Eichel, I'm going with a conditional right now. If we have Jack Eichel, give me a 5-4 VGK victory. If we don't have Jack Eichel, give me a 4-1 uh, Boston victory. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that'll be uh, – mm -hmm. Jack Eichel always seems to get up for these games uh, in Boston for sure, having played, you know, hockey, uh, college hockey in the area. He always – 
seems to uh, perform pretty well, as does Mark Stone with his history with the Ottawa Senators. Are, are they Bruin always... killers? Like, is that what they were when they were in the Atlantic? Is that how it felt in Boston? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Both of those guys uh, always seem to to step up their games against the Bruins for sure when they were when they were in the uh, when the in the Atlantic. So I'd expect them to to have a pretty big game if Eichel is indeed in, and I would expect that he'll play. Uh, he'll want to do everything he can to get ready for for a game in Boston for, for his coach. It's Tony, also, the Atlantic doesn't have a sponsor. What, what do we call the Atlantic? Because they oh, chopped shoot, up. I that forgot. Team. Yeah. I forgot what between it was. Canada and uh, Tony's no, left the Visa. The Honda West still. He yeah, it, is, the Honda West. it is the Honda West. <laughs> Scotiabank <laughs> North. Was it Scotiabank? I forgot about that. It was Scotiabank. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> That's exactly it. Uh, <laughs> Riley Smith. Uh, I think keep an eye on oh, him yeah. tonight. Yeah, his exactly. return back there to Boston. And then also mm-hmm. uh, the fact that he has five power play goals this season. And what is it, Chris? Three shorthanded? Was it? Something like oh, that. Wow. It, it's some, yeah. The power kill between him and your favorite, William Carlson. Ah, there, um, we couldn't certainly... get through a show without mentioning. <laughs> Listen, you, you got you got the you got something in about Mc, about uh, McCrimmon, so I had to get something in there. But uh, yeah, that 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 penalty kill has been amazing since year one. That has not changed, and you know maybe um, maybe our strength is maybe we'll get a we'll get on the kill and we'll get a shorty. Yeah, possible. Well, who do you think steps up for the Bruins tonight? Oh, that's a great question. I'm going to say, uh, I'm going to say David Krejci steps up. You know, there was some uh, question as to whether he, he took off last year to go home because he wasn't a huge fan of Bruce Cassidy and that he came back because <laughs> the coach had moved on. That's awesome. So I'm going to, uh, I'm going to say that he, he and, uh, Posternock specifically will team up for for a couple goals tonight. Do you think that fans are going to make the sojourn from Buffalo to come and boo Jack Eichel? Oh, that's a great question. Uh probably probably not. I I think they'll uh they'll save that for when uh when he's back in Buffalo next season, I guess. Everybody boos Jack Eichel, doesn't matter where. He <laughs> yeah. is. Come on, Tony. <laughs> Chris, who, who do you think could step up for the VGK tonight? Um, I mean, we have to let, let's just assume no, no pitcher Angelo. Well, we know that. And Jack Eichel, I'm feeling he's not going to play. I have no inside knowledge beyond mm-hmm. just a, just a hunch. Um, I really think there's a chance we see Chandler Stevenson center that line one. We'll talk about that maybe on our Twitter later, but I think this would be a good, a good spot for Chandler Stevenson to step up and whoever is going to fill in on that line, assuming I'm, I'm close to right on this. Um, I would actually love to see, I'll put this out there in the universe. I would love to see a line one tonight of Stevenson, Stone, and Connor McCarrier, Will Carrier tonight up on line <laughs> one with Stevenson and Mark Stone. And I want to see Will Carrier just go ham on that first line, not knowing how to do a cycle and where to be, but just going straight to the net and uh, just causing causing ruckus and, you know, getting goal and getting dirty tonight. Yeah, and uh, Ian, uh, also, again, uh, we had the news over the weekend. Um, Alex Petrangelo uh, will not be there tonight and yeah yeah no, he's having some personal lot. issues and mm. the more that we hear about it the more serious it, it appears mm. that's so not an injury it's a no it's a person oh, it's wow. personal reasons and yeah. um we just hope everything's okay and that just mm-hmm, every time sure. that we heard cassidy even uh in the presser and speaking to some media friends yesterday um they also shared some great concern hey on mm. the way out uh, again uh ian tell fans how they could find you yeah, uh, I'm on Twitter at Ian C. McLaren, and uh, people can find the podcast at Locked NHL Bruins uh, and uh, search it up on YouTube in your favorite podcast app and uh, give it a subscribe. Okay, and uh, give us a subscribe as well. I like the way you put that. <laughs> of course, uh, Locked On Golden click, Knights, click. you could find us, of course, on YouTube and also on uh, Twitter. You could find us at Locked On VGK, at Tony Dasco, and at TD Chris G. We appreciate you joining us today, Ian. Should be no a problem. fun game tonight. It's definitely. And thank you to all of you for making Locked On Golden Knights and Locked On Bruins your first listen. For your next listen, check out the Locked On Sports Today podcast, biggest stories of the day, plus instant reactions, some big game recaps, and the take of the day. It's available on the Odyssey app, on YouTube, and wherever you get your podcast. For my man, Chris Golick, for my other man, Ian Cameron McLaren. I'm Tony Cardasco. So long for now. Thanks for tuning in on the crossover. And we'll see you again tomorrow right here on Locked On Bruins and Locked On Golden Knights. Some weird Brady Brady bunch stuff. We all start looking at each other there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>